Welcome to the Spider 3 TV video series on calibration. In this session, I'm going to show you how to do a full Spider 3 TV calibration. For the demonstration purposes today, I will be calibrating a Pioneer Pro 940 HD plasma display. I will be using a Pioneer BDP HD1 Blu ray player to display the Spider 3 TV test patterns. The Blu ray player is connected to the TV through an HDMI cable. Before jumping into the Spider 3 TV and calibrating your set, you would need to be certain of the following. Turn on your TV and let it warm up for at least 30 minutes. This will ensure a constant and repeatable reading during the entire calibration. Make sure you have your TV and DVD remotes. It's a good idea to reset your TV to factory defaults prior to the calibration. This will ensure that you start the calibration at a known state. If your TV or front projector has an automatic black level adjustment, or if you're using a front projector and your projector has an auto iris setting, be sure to disable this. This could cause the calibration process to fail, especially with settings like brightness. If your TV has different display modes such as standard, dynamic, cinema, sports, and so on, set the display mode to standard. If you're unable to eliminate most of the ambient light in the room, try to get a dark cloth to drape over the TV and the meter during the readings. This is most important for adjusting settings such as brightness. If you're calibrating an LCD, DLP, or LCAW screen and don't want to connect to the Spider 3 meter using the suction cup method, you will need to use the Spider 3 tripod mount and lean the Spider 3 TV flush against the screen. The Spider 3 must have direct contact with the screen at all times during the calibration. The only exception to this is when you are calibrating a front projector. If you are calibrating a front projector, set up the tripod with the meter one foot away from the screen facing the center of the screen. Now, let's get started with the calibration. After launching Spider 3 TV, the first few screens in the software will help prepare you before taking any readings. These preparations and recommendations were discussed earlier in this video, so we can skip these screens. Okay, now let's choose the type of TV we have. In this demo, we are using a plasma TV, so I will select that option. Be sure to select the correct TV type when you are calibrating, because Spider 3 TV will behave differently depending on what type of TV you have selected. Click the Next button to continue. Press the Menu button on your TV remote and find the sliders for Brightness, Contrast, Color, Tint, and Color Temperature Preset. Consult your TV manual if you're having difficulties finding where these sliders are located on your TV menu. Now, we need to enter the current, minimum, and maximum values for each of the sliders. If you don't have one or more of these sliders, uncheck the box next to the slider icons. The slider will be grayed out and Spider 3 TV will not calibrate the setting. Some TVs might have different names for each of these settings. For example, brightness is sometimes called black level. Contrast can also be called picture or white level. Color may be referred to as saturation. And tint is sometimes called hue. Some TVs might have different value names for color temperature preset. For example, cold, medium, warm, or low, medium, high, and so forth. You can use the Color Temperature Preset Editor to add new presets to the list. You can edit or delete the existing presets or change the order of the presets. Click the Next button to continue. Throughout the process, we will be using a series of test patterns to measure the display. The test patterns are found in the main menu on your Spider 3 TV DVD under Test Patterns. You can click Test Patterns on the main DVD menu to access the test patterns, or you can simply click the numbers on your DVD remote control for easy access to the specific test pattern you need. Before making any adjustments to your TV, Spider 3 TV will first determine the current state of your TV. This process involves measuring two test patterns a black pattern and a white pattern. 
Spider 3 TV will use this data at the end of the process to show you how much your TV has improved. Make sure your Spider 3 TV meter is connected to your computer. On the DVD, select a black test pattern number 1 or simply click number 1 on your DVD remote control. Click the next button to take a reading. Using the DVD remote, select the white test pattern number 2. Click the next button to take a reading. On some displays, Spider 3 TV will have us change the contrast setting to a certain value. So now, using your TV remote, change the contrast to 45 now. Click the next button to continue. Now, Spider 3 TV will determine the best color temperature preset for your TV. During this process, you will be asked to change the color temperature to each of the values you entered on the record settings screen. At the end of the process, the optimal value will be recommended. Once again, we will be using the white test pattern. Click the next button to continue. Using the TV remote, I will open the TV menu and change the color temperature to low. Click the next button to take a reading. Repeat this process until you have measured each of the color temperature presets. After the last color temperature preset is measured, Spider 3 TV will select the best preset for your TV. Using your remote, make sure you select the recommended color temperature preset before continuing. After calibrating each of the settings, there's a view graph button. This graph, for example, is the color temperature preset settings graph, and it shows you the correct or the recommended color temperature preset value based on a target of D65. So the value of low is closest to our target, which is D65. Click the Next button to continue. Next, Spider 3 TV will determine the best contrast for my TV. Contrast is sometimes called picture or white level. During this process, you will be asked to change the contrast setting to about seven different values. And at the end of the process, the optimal value will be recommended. Using the DVD remote, select the white test pattern number two and click the next button to continue. Using the TV remote, open the TV menu and change the contrast to 60 now. Wait for the TV's menu to disappear before continuing. Click the next button to continue. Repeat this process until you have measured each of the contrast values. After the last contrast value is measured, Spider 3 TV will recommend the best contrast value for your TV. Once you see the red circled recommended value, change your settings to that number and leave it there before you start adjusting the next setting. So, for my TV, Spider 3 TV recommends a contrast of 41. Click the next button to continue. Now, Spider 3 TV will determine the best brightness for my TV. Brightness is sometimes called black level. Using the DVD remote, select the black test pattern number 1 and click the next button to continue. As you did for contrast, once again, you will be asked to change the settings to about seven different values, and at each value, you'll take measurements. At the end, the optimum value will be recommended. Using the TV remote, I'm opening the TV menu and changing the brightness to negative 30 now. Wait for your TV's menu to disappear before continuing. Click the next button to take a reading. Repeat this process until you have measured each of the brightness values. After the last brightness value is measured, Spider 3 TV will recommend the best brightness for your TV. Again, be sure to change your brightness to the red circled recommended value before continuing. Now, I wanted to show you your brightness graph. Your brightness graph and your contrast graph are very similar. Basically, it shows the luminance reading from minimum slider value all the way to your maximum slider value. And as you can see, it circles the answer, the recommended answer that Spider 3 TV selects. Click the next button to continue. Now, Spider 3 TV will determine the best color setting for my TV. Color can sometimes be called saturation. This step is a little different from contrast and brightness. 
During this process, once again, you will be asked to change the setting to about seven different values. However, this time you will be asked to take two readings at each value using two different test patterns. Test pattern color white, number three, and test pattern color blue, number four. Click the next button to continue. Using the DVD remote, select the color white number three test pattern now. Using the TV remote, I'm opening the TV menu and changing color to 30 now. Make sure your TV menu disappears on your TV screen and click the next button to take a reading. Using the DVD remote, Select the color blue number four test pattern now. Keeping the same color value, take another reading by clicking next. Repeat this process until you've measured each of the color values. After the last color value is measured, Spider 3 TV will recommend the best color value for your TV. Again, be sure you change your color to the red circled recommended value before continuing. Now let's take a look at the color graph. If we look at this graph, the blue line represents, of course, the color blue, and the black line actually represents the color white. And what we're looking for is where these two luminance values intersect. And again, these are the luminance values for each of the slider values for the color setting. Click the next button to continue. Now, Spider 3 TV will determine the best tint setting for your TV. Tint is sometimes called hue. This step is very similar to color. During this process, once again, you will be asked to change the setting to about seven different values, and you will be asked to take two readings at each value using two different test patterns. Test pattern tint cyan, number five, and test pattern tint magenta, number six. Remember, you can always press five or six on your DVD remote for quick access to these test patterns. Using your DVD remote, select the Tint Cyan pattern and click the Next button to continue. Using the TV remote, I am opening the TV menu and changing the tint to negative 30 now. Remember, wait for the TV menu to disappear before continuing. Click the Next button to take a reading. Using the DVD remote, select the Tint Magenta, test pattern number 6 now. Keep the same tint value and take another reading by clicking next. Repeat this process until each of the tint values have been measured. After the last tint value is measured, Spider 3 TV will recommend the best tint value for your TV. Once again, be sure to change your tint to the red circled recommended value before continuing. Now, let's take a look at the tint graph. The tint settings graph is very similar to the color settings graph. Basically, the cyan uh, line represents, of course, the color cyan, and the magenta line represents the color of magenta and the setting of tint. And what we're looking for is where the luminance values cross uh, for each of the luminance readings taken for the slider value range. Click the Next button to continue. Spider 3 TV will now compare the new state of your TV with the former or initial state of your TV to determine the improvement. Using the DVD remote, select the black test pattern number one on your DVD. Click the next button to take a reading. Finally, select the white test pattern number two on your DVD. Click the next button to take a reading. Here is a summary of the changes I've made. Each slider illustrates the changes I've made to optimize my TV and improve my viewing experience. You can click the icons next to the sliders to see the graph showing the changes you've made to your TV. You can click the report button to see a detailed report. It is a good idea to print or export your report to PDF for easy reference. You should calibrate your TV about every six months or any time you purchase a new component such as a new DVD player. On the next screen, you can check before and after images to see improvements of your display. Using your DVD remote control, select the before and after images on your DVD menu. After you have printed a copy of your Spire 3 TV report, you can change your settings back to their original values and see the differences between the former and current state of your TV. 
This concludes this Spider 3 TV video series on calibration. Please check back at spider3tv.com for more videos in the future. Thank you.